This here is a Mosler fire safe I have to open. With a four and three quarters measurement and a dial and handle type, I know I have a B6 lock with a flipper type fence. But it really doesn't matter which lock is in that safe. Whether it's a flipper fence or spring type fence, like a 6730, as long as I have contact points and I can do a wheel count, I can manipulate that lock. It also don't matter to know which way the dial comes to a stop because the lock will open in either direction. And that's where manipulation can help you out when you don't know what lock is in there to drill it. Now to begin my manipulation process here, I am going every two and a half numbers. That's my normal process of how I usually run the dial. And what I do, as you can see, I come back every number here and I am checking my contact point and it's stopping at the number four right at the opening index. Now, what I like to do is I usually park wheel number one and only run wheel number two and three. Now the reason I do this is because it's much easier to determine which wheel has the correct gate on it. The more wheels you run together and when you find a number, the more process of elimination you have to do in order to find that number to the correct gate. If you don't pick the correct corresponding gate to the right wheel, then the rest of your manipulation will all be in vain. That's why it's much easier to only pick from the two wheels uh, after you determine a gate. All right, another trick is if you run the wheels, let's say to the left, and you don't find no good indication, then take all the wheels to the right. Most of the time, I would say at least 80% of the time, you will find a gate either running the wheels one direction or the other. Now what I'm doing here is I found a good low area, probably between the 65 and 85. So I'm running one wheel number here at a time to see if I have a better indication. And look at that. It actually dropped down to number three on my dial. So I have a very good indication at this point. But that's not necessarily a gate right there. It's just a low spot in the wheel pack. One way to determine when you actually have a true gate is when you have an instant difference in the dial. So look for a sudden change and not a gradual change. Okay, we're gonna jump over here real quick to a Browning gun safe that I had to manipulate open. Uh, we'll come back to the other one. All right, now on this one, this is a 6730. And actually put on here, these are Lockmaster's uh, crow's feet indicators that actually help to determine a uh, little bit closer fine graduations uh, when you manipulate. As you can see how the two lines, I have them matching. All right, now I begin my manipulation and I come back each two and a half numbers and the lines match. And I come back to 70 and I come back and they're about the same. And I keep going here, 67 and a half. And whoa, look at the difference. Look at how far that line is over to the right. That's a regular reading there. Uh, but no, right there, look at, I'm hitting the contact point and look at what a perfect indication that is. Now, is that a low spot on the wheel or a gate? Let's keep going and find out. We run another two and a half numbers and whoa, now look at the way difference on that. So I only had the one big difference in the dial at that one number. So yes, that is definitely a gate. So now I'm gonna go back about five numbers and I'm gonna run one number at a time to zero in on the center of that uh, gate. Okay, that's nothing there. We'll go to 71. Okay, the lines, they match up. Okay, so nothing yet. We go to 70. Okay, come back. <clears throat> okay, about the same. 69, come back. Mm, well, it's starting to get something there. So I would mark down 69 on my paper. 68, okay, I come back and, whoa, now I got a really good reading right there. Okay, so we have 68, 69, and 67, come back and st still got a, a reading there, and 66, and nothing. Okay, actually it's a high spot there, it's past my line. So we have three uh, indications there. We're gonna take the middle number, uh, which would be uh, number 68, would be a gate, in one of the combination numbers. Now, like I said, I park one wheel and just run two wheels, so it's pretty much easy to determine uh, which number that is. 
And in short span of time, I think it was like less than a half hour I had this open. Customer was very happy about that. All right, back to the first job. All right, now I'm still manipulating this Moser here. And what I did is I actually uh, found a couple good readings here. Uh, I found, let's see, one I found at 50 right. And number three, I found at 81 right. So we run the second one. So we're just going to run our combination now here. Wow, look at that. That's all the way down to two. I escalate the dial. And what that does is if the fence is close to dropping in, it will drop in. So if you get a real good reading, it's a good idea to escalate the dial real fast back and forth. Uh, and this helps jiggle it in. As you've been probably noticing, I always hit the contact points twice. And this develops sensitivity for accurate readings. And there we go. This time it dropped in. All right. Just manipulated open the Moser B6 lock. Let the customer get their stuff. I've been excited for three years and finally got them to approve somebody to come in and crack my safe here. Okay, here's the uh, manufacturer's label. It's a four hour fire rating. And here's the B6 lock, the three wheels and a driver. And uh, there you go, like I said, as long as you have contact points, you can manipulate the lock.